Skyforge is back! Actually, it wasn't too long ago that I took my first look at this game, and dang, what a difference a few months will make. Just about everything I remember about this game has changed. Hey, cool loading screen! I miss the moose. First off, there's now some spiffy intro sequences, and tutorials complete with terrible voiceovers! We need to comb through the town, eliminate the verds, and find the survivors. Now it has been mentioned in several places that these voiceovers are just placeholders until open beta, but yeah, we've heard that before. <coughs> Destiny! <laughs> Sorry about that, had some bad voice acting in my throat. Anywho, here's some of the highlights. Come on, get, get them. them! Hold them back! It seems we have guests. Kill him, you will pay for that. There's also story, and the story of Skyforge is written flawlessly. At the beginning of the game, you are told that you are an immortal, and then in a flashback like two minutes later, you're told that you're not an immortal. But after a pretty badass cutscene where you take down and are eventually taken down by a bunch of rodents of unusual size, you find out that you are an immortal. Flawless. You really should have just opened with the flashback. Now, you've probably noticed that in general, Skyforge looks fantastic, which is true. Although sometimes the character's eyes make them look possessed. Oh, he looks lifeless. But really, that's not a problem most of the time, as the game really does look damn good. Also, totally unnecessary and unrealistic boob physics. Really? Now, I'm not an expert or anything, but I'm pretty sure boobs are not made of jello. Unless immortals have jello boobs. In which case, I'm totally wrong. But I'm not mad about it. What I am mad about is there's no jiggle physics on male characters. Talk about a double standard. Although I do get a butt slider. You know what, this is getting really weird, let's move on. Character creation is pretty basic. You'll get to choose from a lot of pre-made options and then wrap things up with a few sliders. The two coolest parts of this, in my opinion, was choosing your running style, which was either light or heavy, and choosing your stance. They're not really all that different or special, but they stood out to me. You'll also get to choose your costume. Equipment in this game doesn't actually show up on your character. Instead, your look is entirely dependent on your costume, and doing certain missions will unlock new costume options, like the underwear costume, which I'm sure is bound to become a favorite for the hopelessly immature. One of the biggest selling points of Skyforge is its cool-looking action combat, and I must say it looks damn good. You left-click to do a basic attack, and then you can right-click after one, two, or three regular attacks to do a combo. You also have a bunch of special attacks that are bound to the number keys. Plus, once you get an enemy low enough on health, you can execute a finisher, which are really freaking cool. In the six hours I played, I dabbled in all of the classes that Skyforge currently has in the game, but mostly I concentrated on the three new ones. The Lightbinder, the Gunner, and the Berserker. I found all of them to be really fun, especially the Lightbinder and the Gunner. But after six hours of playing, I started to get bored. Maybe as the game gets further along, the combat gets deeper, but at this point, I found it to be a bit shallow. Yeah, it looks pretty, but it's just a lot of clicking. You may have to dodge every once in a while, and there's no huge circles on the ground telling you where the attack is gonna hit, meaning you have to pay attention, which is really nice. But ugh, most of the fights could be solved with just left clicking, and all of the bosses I faced were simple tests of endurance. It was kind of interesting though, betting on which we give out first, my finger or the boss's health bars. Ah, finger cramp, finger cramp! Also, for the six hours I played, the game was very hub-based. You start on a space station, you pick a planet, jump in, do all of the quests on the planet, which usually leads you all the way through the very small zone, and then you're done. Back to the space station thingy, pick a new planet slash zone, and then do it again! I've heard the game does have some more open zones later on, but I really would have liked to have seen these earlier. First impressions mean a lot. Character progression is done by purchasing nodes in this tree-like system, which is cool, except in the earlier levels, it's pretty much on a straight path. Once again, I've heard that this opens up and branches out as you get higher level, but I can't help but feel disappointed when I think of a system like Path of Exile. Oh dear god, just looking at that gives me a headache. But a good headache, like an ice cream headache or something. At the end of the day, Skyforge is a fun game. It provides a decent amount of entertainment. But for me, after just a few hours, I was bored. There was no challenge, and each fight just felt like the one before it. Now, all of this could change once you get higher level, but I didn't feel the urge to get there. I could easily see this game being a very good time waster. But at this point, I don't see this one taking over as anyone's go-to MMO. And that's okay. I kind of think Skyforge is actually aiming to be a good time waster. So for what it's trying to be, it's good. I could think of worse ways to waste time. Like watching YouTube, am I right? <laughs> Please don't leave. Hey, you didn't leave. Thanks for sticking around. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see future videos. I've also put two of my other videos for you to watch right up here. You can also follow me on Twitter and donate to me on Patreon like these other immortals. I actually don't think they're immortal, so don't try to stab them or anything. That wouldn't end well.